Hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And tonight we have a huge setback from Harry being called a liar by the judge in front of everyone and basically ridiculed by his own attorney. But how did this happen? But first, I want to share with you a question that comes every now and then to haunt me. Every now and then I remember that Harry is a Virgo and I ask myself, how the bloody F is that possible? He's a disgrace to our most glorious sun sign. I want to start a petition so he's expelled and sent to, I don't know, Gemini or something. This is unacceptable. But, well, uh, Prince Harry's phone hacking case against the sun publisher and claim of secret agreement between Buckingham Palace and the press is thrown out by a judge, but other claims against paper will go to trial. So... What's this all about? Mr. Justice Fancourt also dismissed the Duke of Sussex claim there was a secret agreement between Buckingham Palace and the press saying it was bollocks. Well, I do my best to bring you surprising news and I understand it's a bit disappointing when the news are not that surprising. So just for your amusement, here's Harry with a liar liar hat. But this gets way worse. Mr. Fancourt found this Claims in relation to the alleged secret agreement were not plausible or credible. It is quite clear there was never any such agreement and it is only the Duke who has ever asserted there was. Now, that was a sick burn. It was telling in the most British and polite way that Harry's remarks of Buckingham Palace having any sort of agreement was nothing short of sheer Hubris. Now, Harry has another option that will be proceeding with a claim for unlawful information gathering, but not through phone hacking, but for private investigation. The question is, does Harry have the receipts or he's thinking of telling the judge, trust me, bro? It doesn't matter how much paperwork we are talking about. We are talking about actual proof of any allegations, which got me wondering from the very beginning, why did David Sherborne accept this case, knowing the odds of winning? Yes, I could say that he did it for publicity, but I don't know. I thought the strategy of losing was something only the Harkles did for their infamy career. And by the way, Sherborne was the same guy who represented uh, Johnny Depp in the uh, UK back in 2020 for his legal case against his son, which, yeah, he lost that one as well. Are you seeing a pattern here or it's just me? Not to mention that he also represented Megan on her Mail on Sunday stint, in which he lost the first round and then Megan dumped him. But at least she dumped him so she could win one pound. But... What I find interesting about this guy's career is that he is writing over celebrities' cases, so I don't think he's very worried about losing cases because he's just famous, I guess. And since he has represented these two, it's not much of a stretch to imagine that they share at least some of their values, so make of that what you will. But we end up with the word opportunist because one of the reasons this judgment was made is because there are certain silly points in the way the case was presented, especially that it dates back too far in time to be admissible, or in other ways that Harry did not really think he had a case until his friend Elton John suggested that he should go for it and pitch Sherborne to be his attorney as well. Now, I cannot help but think that all these celebrities decided to file this lawsuit and just told Harry so he could bring some of that royal clout and headlines to the case. After all, when you search in worldwide trends and compare Prince Harry with Elton John, Elizabeth Hurley, and Hugh Grant, all involved in this lawsuit, it's obvious that the Ginger Winger is the one driving the most attention, followed by a distant second by the singer. So regardless if Harry's case was dismissed, at least he being there brought notoriety to the others. What do you think? And we also have this strange silence of methane in the face of the writers and actors who strike in Hollywood. Acting quiet, Meghan Markle remains uncharacteristically mute as her former fellow actors go on a strike. 
Former soap star the Duchess of Sausages remains mute while her fellow striking Louis man the Hollywood picket lines. Megan was once a proud member of the Screen Actors Guild American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, who are now down in scripts over pay and the use of AI. In her Oprah interview, she described union membership as something she sorely missed when turning royal, telling the palace HR department, I just really need help because in my old job there was a union and they would protect me. SAG AFTRA tweeted mid-interview, We are still here for you, Megan. Everyone deserves the protection of a union. Well, I guess the union is something that she dropped once it stopped being useful to her. But how can we forget that at some point Megan lied to casting directors by pretending to be in an actor's union to get a part early in her career? And to be fair, I have read my fair share of memoirs and biographies, and it's hard to remember one story of any person from history that didn't include some kind of pretending early in their career. So I would give Megan a pass on this one if it wasn't that Megan has kept pretending and pretending and pretending over and over again with no end in sight. So there comes a time when enough is enough. And let's say that time was way before Mexit. But when it comes to royals that actually stepped out of the spotlight, nothing beats Princess Mako of Japan, who was spotted riding public transport in New York City. To be fair, sharing these photos from the Daily Fail I feel like an actual invasion of privacy, even if they were taken in public, because this is the real meaning of wanting to live a normal life. And perhaps we are entering that season when royal news are slower. I found this tweet from Evelina P. really funny. Royal reporters in July be like, hey, Frida, you got anything? Nope. All right, get back on Twitter. Says here Diana is, oh wait, that's from 1992. Oh hey, Ginny Bogle says Kate don't like tiaras. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. And uh, perhaps this is not that different from reality itself. Because yesterday we were talking about the, those attacks on Catherine not being that joyful about jewelry or whatever. But we got the Caribbean prince to remind us what real fashion superstars have said about Catherine. Donatella Versace, Catherine is beautiful. She looked very regal. Donna Karen, for me, it wasn't so much about the dress. It was all about her. She was the most beautiful bride in the world. Karl Lagerfeld, she is very elegant. And Oscar de la Renta, absolutely ravishing. And I wanted to share with you this picture from Royal News Network featuring Beatrice and Edo on holiday. I think it's a lovely picture and I was sure you would enjoy it as much as myself. My Royal Rogues, it's my pleasure to create these daily videos for you. All you need to do to support my channel is hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. And remember the two most important words, much love and bliss.